Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jay, sir. Uh, in your real front-end system design interview, you might be asked to implement some small widgets or design a whole app, like a whole product, right? So in that case, only front-side knowledge is not enough. We need to understand the basic of the server-side. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to introduce the four uh, most important concept we as a front-end engineer myself we should all, all know to uh, be able to draw a nice and convincing chart to the interviewer to tell it to, to, to convince them that we are able to uh, to accomplish our jobs right so these four tools that we need to know but doesn't mean that uh, we need to master them we need to know what the basic uh, knowledge of it and to know how, what it is for and what it is uh, is best for okay now the first one is CDN uh, as a front-end engineer uh, I believe that uh, we have already familiar with it to so cut it straight uh, we need to serve anything cacheable through the CDN especially for JavaScript CSS and images something like that also especially for the global services why because rather than allowing these clients like the browser mobile or the application access our servers directly we need we better to serve them through the uh, content delivery network which abbreviated for CDN and so that's the uh, the CDN could cache our static resources so it can uh, drastically reduce the request to our origin server to save some costs right and also, it, the CDN always have these global uh, edge nodes uh, around the globe. And uh, if we are serving the users around uh, the world, uh, the CDN could actually provide the users with the closest edge nodes so that, uh, to, uh, so that uh, the user would get the resources as soon as possible. So to reduce the, uh, so the CDN could help us reduce latency. So. The CDN, if you think about performance, always talk about CDN, just serve anything cacheable on CDN. So that's it. There are some providers like Akamai, Cloudflare, or Amazon CloudFront. Well, they're basically doing the same thing. Okay, this is CDN, pretty related to our front end. The next one is Load Balancer. It's uh, more about uh, the infrastructure. Anyway, so the basic idea is that uh, the Load Balancer is actually a dispatcher for a lot of servers. You know, if you had a lot of requests, like had a lot of uh, intense uh, logic, but one server is not enough, right? And you have a bunch of servers. So uh, when a request came, uh, which server will do the work? Right, you need a dispatcher, right? You want to tell, uh, tell, you want to tell the, you would handle the request to specific servers. So that's the load balancer means. Let's take a look at the graph. So the clients. This is from the Nginx homepage. So a lot, a lot of the clients requests can come and come to our, this is our real servers. There were a lot of them, the servers, and uh, you would need to matching. You think of like a matching app and uh, match the request to which server. There are a lot of algorithm here. One is called, I, I, I remember it is called a Robin, 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 round Robin. So it's just randomly, not randomly, but just uh, choose a server uh, in order. So if a request come, it will serve to this server and then this server and do the round around or just do it randomly. And also you, you could you could uh, uh, hold the state of each server, see if it's busy or not and uh, do it in another, another uh, uh, handle the request in another server. But there is called, what, what is it? It's stick or not, if the user if the same user comes, you would like possibly you would like to serve the user with the same server, right? They maybe have some uh, uh, I don't know state stateful uh, data. If that case, you need to keep track of the user, like use cookie or something, and doing some hash, and then serve the serve the server. I don't know. So pretty much, uh, this is the pretty much what the load balancer is. So in a real interview. If you have a bunch of servers, always add load balancer before it, even for the even if it is for the HTML server or the H API server, any kind of server groups, just add load balancer, okay? So, so yeah, it is a dispatcher helps up with the performance. 
And the third one is Redis. Um, so this is also very simple. You would always want to store some data. Uh, there are there are some kind of uh, new data uh, database right uh, in our days, like the NoSQL or other kind of database. I actually I'm not familiar with, but remember database querying is slow. Remember this. Yeah, and if you query something, it is actually takes some time. So let's cache it in memory. Yeah, just avoid the querying. Uh, don't read database on every request. So that's what just like you have a millions of requests come comes in, and if you search the database for each time, uh, your server's gonna bl gonna blow. Uh, yeah. So the idea is to cache the data in the memory based on the queries. Yeah, to avoid accessing the database as uh, much as possible. So that's what the Redis is doing. So this is his, uh, it is the application. If you want to fetch some data store, the first, if you check if it is in the Redis or not, if it is cached or not. If it is cached, this is in memory, so it's just pretty fast. There's no querying. There's no in interfering with the files. And then if it is, you just uh, read it. And so uh, database is saved. If it is not in it, you get it from the database and cache it. So for the later use. Well, there are a lot of other problems like uh, like that use this kind of mechanism. What if the cached uh, would never hit? Like uh, suddenly the memory uh, is broken, and uh, if that thing happens, a lot of requests will come to our application will be directed to the database anyway, right? So that the database will be uh, will explode, right? The servers, your application just explode. So we maybe like need a secondary cache, the cache for the cache. Anyway, I'm not an expert on, on server side, so this is you, you, we just need to understand. We need to any any time you uh, use draw a database in your chart to describe something, put Redis before the data before the database. Yeah, they remember it's very important. Okay, the last one is message queue. The idea is also very simple. Suppose like uh, there are a lot ton, the ton of requests come in, and uh, at the short period of time, the requests peak, and the server doesn't have enough time to to process those requests, and the server might just ex explode, and the users cannot wait, right? So uh, for that specific time, everything just doesn't work. How how should we do it? How should we solve this problem? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Remember, we we uh, do throttling in JavaScript, right? So what we do similarly is just uh, tell the users we got it right away and memo it down and do and then we do the tasks later in our pace. So we don't hurry, we don't we don't rush ourselves. We so say like we can handle a task per second, then. Then for that one second, we get 100 tasks. Don't worry. We just return the user's ID or something. OK, we are going to do it. And then we use another process uh, to, to process the task, just one task per second. Even the 100 came, we will process it one by one and in our pace. So the server is, sa is saved and the user just uh, they will wait for some time, but the response is 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 instant. So how uh, the users won't won't uh, be confused. Yeah. So this is basic idea. So let's take a look at the graph. This one is from the Amazon. So the producer, uh, producer. What is producer? Yeah, you have uh, trigger some task, right? A lot of maybe a lot of task. We put them all into a queue, and then process them in our pace in this queue. So and then. Uh, this is the consumer. This is the yeah. This is the producer. Use the server side logic, which is adding tasks. So that we put a signal, uh, you, you put in the queue, and then we have a, a consumer put, putting things out from this queue as with a specific uh, uh what what is it with the frequency yeah. Like a one per one per second or two per second, and then process it, and then 
say like you are uh, uh, you are done and you you might send a notification to the user's client and then that's another topic you send a signal to the web push or or, or some push mechanism and the user get noticed also like like you are uploading an, an image on Twitter you upload an image actually the server need to process that image right uh, but but if you but actually you don't wait for that image you post it your your post already stored in the database and it is fan out uh, uh, the fan out process or also in a queue we ignore that suppose that post is already on your timeline but actually the Im image I believe it is not processed yet might might be not processed yet they are put in the queue because like so, so many people upload the images at the same time uh, you don't have the time to process them all you need to do them one by one uh, uh, theoretically you might if you have more servers you can do it in a, a parallel way but the idea is that you don't do it uh, uh, synchronously. You you put them the put the tax memory down in a queue and do it on your own pace. This is a consumer. This is a producer. So that's the message queue is doing. So in a real uh, front end system design case, if you like uh, receive some post request from the user, if it is a uh, read if it is a uh, uh, read intensive. Uh, like uh, there is a competing com competing case uh, for uh, different users always add the message queue to avoid the bottlenecks on the servers yeah and also there is a possibility that uh, when you process some process a queue uh, there might be duplicate events you get them out and merge them so that's another way you can improve the performance so you batch you batch the work yeah so this is the queue and uh, okay so that uh, this four let's uh, re review it so CDN load balancer LB Redis message queue within these four tools I believe even that even that even though we don't uh, need to master them we don't need to write the code for them just with this brief understanding we could draw a nice chart uh in a real interview and get our ideal offer so good luck and uh do more practice hope you can get your offer this is jaser uh hope it helps see you next time bye bye